All right, hello and welcome back to the channel. So this video will serve as my final review for the game Dust and Elysian Tale. Now, full disclosure, I haven't finished this game yet, but I just don't find myself ever in the mood to play it anymore. The game is by no means bad. It's just not compelling. And like I said, I never find myself wanting to play it anymore. Now, if you followed my Let's Play series, then you know towards the end, I was really struggling uh, to stay motivated to keep playing. Uh, to not rant too much, uh, I'll break down what I liked about it and the parts where I thought it fell short. So, for the good. As far as the overall art style, meaning the environments, the character design, and just the overall aesthetic of the game, I did really like it. It looks good, and the tone is generally bright and fun. You know, it reminds me of like an anime or like a morning cartoon you would see. Yeah, but the best part about this game is the mechanics and the controls. So the combat and overall movement of your character just, it just feels good. You know, everything is responsive and flows really nicely. Uh, your combos and the how the movement controls work with it are just pretty darn good. But uh, that brings me to where it falls short. So now on like the, the bad, right? For how good the combat controls are, the game gets pretty dull pretty quickly. You only ever have the one weapon and one move set for it. Now, sure, you unlock some other techniques as the game goes on, but you never really get away from the same tried and true techniques. There's just not really much variety. I even mentioned it uh, several times in my playthrough that I'm just using the same moves and combos over and over since they work the best and have a little room for error. The, the next area that I thought uh, wasn't very compelling was the personality of the characters, right? Like, the main character, Dust, is just your typical mysterious swordsman with amnesia, and his sidekick is just there to be the comic relief. And that's it, really. The rest of the characters just filler. Even the talking sword feels like all it does is just there to dispense plot points and nothing else. So to finish up, I, I don't think I'll revisit uh, this game anytime soon. It played well enough, but that's it. Now, oddly, uh, the only reason I started the game was because it was recommended to me on Steam after I finished playing The Vagrant, a much better game in my opinion. You know, even though The Vagrant also only ever has one weapon type, you still have different varieties for them. You know, some will have uh, more damage, but a slower are slower to hit, while others will be faster but less damage, and some even have different elemental effects. And there's also a character progression system, so two people are never going to have the same experience. And you can also tailor it to fit your own preferred playstyle. Like I said, overall, not a bad game, just not interesting enough for me. I honestly couldn't genuinely recommend it even for the most diehard of platformer fan. So, you know, even the oldest Castlevania games had different weapons and items to really mix things up. So unfortunately, I won't be finishing the game, at least not on YouTube. If I do, it'll be on my own time. And I have other games that I'm looking to play and other content that I'm working on. And that being said, if there is a game that you think I'd like and you want to see a playthrough of or you just want me to discuss in more detail, uh, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and leave a like. And as always, thank you again, and I will catch you all in the next one.